When I was 19, my great passion was mathematics. Gauss, Poincaré, differential equations. I thought life just didn't get any better than that. And then I saw an article in one of my parents' Time magazines about the father of abstract art, Vasily Kandinsky. Like Saul on the road to Damascus, I was fundamentally changed. From that moment on, art has been my all-consuming passion. Kandinsky, reproduced in this Time magazine, was one of his great geometric abstractions. It never seemed odd to me that someone could fall in love with art, not by seeing a da Vinci or a Hopper, but by looking at a totally non-objective painting. The contemporary artist Michael Kessler has some radiantly beautiful small abstractions on display at the Schmidt Dean Gallery in Philadelphia. It is hard for me to imagine anyone not responding to their beautiful surfaces, intricate interplay of geometry and aleatory line, and impeccable craftsmanship. When I began teaching, I realized that many, perhaps even most people, are very perturbed by the whole notion of abstract art. They think they are not getting something, and this causes them great displeasure. I've considered doing a thought experiment. I will invite over a group of people who are nonplussed by abstract art. As an icebreaker, we will solve a few simple differential equations together. Once we're all relaxed, I imagine explaining to them Kandinsky's theories of synthesia, how one can taste a color, hear blue, and see a melody. I would tell them that loving abstract art is no different than loving a fugue by Bach. There's no story in either, but there is so much formal beauty. I would then tell them about the Michael Kessler show and escort them over to the gallery and watch as their humdrum lives become utterly enriched by the beauty of his abstract art. Mm -hmm.